I'm with Maurice Tomlinson, and he is the International Grand Marshal for Capital Pride this year. And Maurice has been front and center in the fight to raise awareness around Jamaica, where there's been some pretty horrible news stories recently. Um, and just recently, you won a battle in Toronto with... Uh, we won a battle. We won a battle in <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> yeah. It's my pleasure to help because there's no room for, for homophobic artists in, in Canada. No, there is not. And we were able to get the um, performer Queen Africa from performing on the dime of taxpayers at the Toronto Rastafest in on Saturday, August 24. Um, thanks to the great publicity provided by a certain Andre Houston of the Extra, <laughs> we're able to bring to the attention of the Canadian public the fact that the Toronto Public Library and Service Canada was sponsoring her to come and perform, even though the Jamaica Minister of Culture apologized for her homophobic rants at a very recent National Independence Celebration. So there was really no place for someone like that to be performing on the public dime in Canada. We had to say no to that. And she has expressed her support for the sodomy laws in, in Jamaica, something that uh, the Prime Minister right now is uh, speaking out on. Yes, the Prime Minister, when she was inaugurated, or when, just before she was inaugurated, she did say that she was going to call for a review of the anti-sodomy law because she does not believe that LGBT should be discriminated against. And so for her, um, Queen Africa, to be a, you know, a cultural ambassador for Jamaica and be supporting something that not even our political leaders support any longer, you know, it, it was just it was inconceivable that we should allow her to come to Canada and, and, and perform here and do that and perpetuate her hate. Has the tide turned in Jamaica? Are we, are we, are we looking at a brighter future there? I mean, we're beginning to see glimmers of hope. I mean, the fact that the Minister of Culture condemned Africa's performance after the National Independence Celebration is very significant because last year, Africa's partner, Tony Rebel, did the exact same thing at the exact same venue and there was no outcry. So there is definitely some movement. When Dwayne Jones was murdered this year, um, you know, the 17-year-old cross-dresser, we finally saw condemnation from the Minister of Justice. In 2011, when O'Shane Gordon, a 16-year-old youth, again was killed because of questionable relations with other men, there was no, there was no public outcry. So we're seeing at least the government acknowledging that they have to condemn these acts. Now we want them to go further and actually do something to prevent them from happening. And lift those laws. Exactly. You have to lift the laws and open up the, the space for people to see their LGBTs, brothers, sisters, as fellow Jamaicans. Right now, we're seen as unapprehended criminals. And how much does the church play into uh, the, the widespread homophobia? Oh, the, the, the fundamentalist churches are significant. I mean, even this morning, I got an email threat from um, a member of my mother's church, you know, um, basically saying that I should be stoned and, you know, the wrath of God it should be poured out upon me, etc., etc. And it is significant to note that when, uh, Dwayne Gord, when, sorry, when Dwayne Jones was killed, it was a member of his church who pointed him out to the mob that he was not, in fact, female. And that is the kind of perverted Christianity that operates among the fundamentalists in Jamaica. They really believe that gays should be wiped off the face of the earth.